Okay, so in the last episode, we finished off with the sphere that was the final geometric object class that we would create. So like I said in that episode, we would come back and actually render an image that is useful. So this is what we left off with our driver class. So we have a width and a height, we have our image and buffer, and then our loop, as well as finally writing the image. So what we're going to do is create a sphere. And as you remember, for our sphere class, we had three arguments. We have a point, a double, which is the radius, and then a color. So we are going to center our sphere at the origin. We're going to make it a radius of 60.0. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And then a color of red. So there's a sphere. Utilizing the sphere class we created in the last episode. So now that we have the sphere, we can go into our loop. So we need to create a ray for each individual pixel of our view plane. So in this case we have a y value and then we have an x value. So we want to create a ray to use to check if there's an in intersection for that pixel of our image. So new ray and the arguments for our ray are a point and a vector. So I'm going to write this out and then explain it. So what we are doing here is creating a ray with a specific point and a specific vector. So first I'm going to explain the x value. So for now what we are doing is orthographic projection. Orthographic projection is what you would imagine if you were looking at let's say a set of architectural drawings, blueprint. You have every ray perpendicular to your view plane and what it creates is a depthless image so this isn't perspective viewing it's orthographic it does not create the illusion of perspective so what we want is we have an x value so let's imagine we're starting at the first um, column in our image so you have zero and we're centering this for now because it is actually a lot easier to center your view plane in the xy plane and pushed out along the z-axis it makes the mathematics much easier in the following episodes I'll go over how to create a practical viewing system but for now we have let's say 0 minus the width of our view plane divided in half so if it's 0 that would be 800 so negative 800 in the x direction would be our first x value and then we want the center of that pixel so add 0.5 because we're assuming each pixel is 1.0 in size the next one would be y so let's say we're taking the very first row of our image so y equals 0 minus the height so 450 divided by 2 so that would be negative 450 plus 0.5 so this would give us so that for the first row and the first column of our image we would have negative 800 0.5 plus negative 450.5 that would be our x and y point for our array and then we choose an arbitrary value for z so in this case I want it <coughs> 100 units away from the origin now you could make put make this value anything you want you could get 10,000, 100,000, a million, it wouldn't matter because this is orthographic projection because there's no perspective as things become further away they do not diminish in size so I'll talk about that in a second so I just made it 100, it has to be further, far enough away so that you can actually 
intersect the sphere. And then finally we have our vector. So this is creating a vector that is directed in the negative z direction. So all of our rays at this point are going to be directed in the negative z direction. So um, like I said in the following episodes I will talk about a practical viewing system. However that is much more complicated because you have to create an orthonormal basis, compute that yourself, and then multiply each value accordingly. So we have a ray. So what we want to do is check if our sphere if the hit value is not equal to 0, 0.0. If it is not equal to 0, 0.0, that means that it intersected the sphere. So what we can do is set the RGB value for x, y, and this would be sphere.color.2 integer. Integer. Otherwise, if it is 0, 0.0, we're going to set the buffer to be zero. I'm just going to make a black background. So this is the basics of our first image. So what we can do is we can run this and I think it should work. There we go. We have our sphere in space. So like I said, what we can do is go back and make this, let's say, 70. Render look at it and it's the exact same size. That's because with orthographic projection the size of the object is not dependent on how far away the view plane is from it but instead dependent on the size of the view plane. So what we could do is manipulate our point. So if we want to zoom in basically we want our view plane to be smaller. So let's do 0.5 uh, let me just close this off. And then we can render this and see what happens. So we zoomed in. So what we did is essentially split the size of our view plane in half without actually diminishing the size of our actual image, <coughs> which in effect causes uh, a zoom in effect. This will be useful later because we want to when we do perspective viewing, you have a eye point as well as a look at point, which is your reference point, and you define your field of view based on that vector and your view plane. So you want a way to zoom in without actually changing those values, and that's where this pixel size comes in handy. You can manipulate the size of the pixels to zoom in or zoom out without actually changing the size of our image. So that'll be it for this episode. I think we covered enough. We actually rendered an image, set a color. So I guess in the next episode, I'll probably talk about some object-oriented design. Um, we need to make several classes so that we can organize this in a more readable fashion. So yeah, that'll probably be the next episode. Uh, thanks for watching.